Hello, audience worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with uh, another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question has to do with antennas and how closely you can put them together. Um, and I'm going to start right out with the general rule that in antennas, everything affects everything. And if you put an antenna into uh, the near field of another antenna and they both resonate on the same band, you will find that the second antenna will act as a resonator uh, on that band. Uh, what he has done here, now this is a little bit open to interpretation. The question is from Steve, AI7SV, and uh, he has the reference station antenna. Okay, it's hung at 20 feet, and so you've got this right here, and the coax comes down about here, the one-third point. Okay, now he says he has created another antenna and then fed half wave with a 49 to 1 ballon, and I hung this antenna below the MFJ 2010. Now there's two ways to look at that. Uh, one, he hung it literally just under the other antenna, you know, inches apart. Well, if this is on 20, this will resonate on 22. And because they are so close to each other, the near field of the two will combine. Now, you, he's only feeding one. Um, he's feeding one, but the other being resonant will pick up on that, and it will change the pattern of the antennas, both of them. Uh, this one will... Uh, this one will resonate in sympathy with this one and vice versa, okay? So let's look at the other alternative that he did. And we'll have a much different uh, outcome. Let's suppose that this is the um, reference antenna, okay? It goes this way. And he has got the um, infed half wave strung up as an inverted V underneath this to its apex down to the other end. Okay, and it doesn't matter which end he draws the coax off. In this case, they will not affect each other as much. Now, remember that they're in each other's near field. Now, the near field of an antenna um, is where every single little point on here acts like an omnidirectional antenna. And you get the waves, you waves like this, like this, like this. And as you get further away, these start to form a wave front. Okay? And that's what's the near field. The far field which is what we most commonly think of, is when the antenna already has formed uh, into what it's going to propagate as for a long distance, and these wave fronts become uh, parallel and so on. But if you run it this way, you're not so bad off. If you run it where one is right under the other, uh, no matter which switch you turn, you're probably getting both antennas. One may be better uh, than the other for you. So I would recommend um, that you think of antennas as like people or animals. They need their personal space. Okay? So if you get an antenna, two antennas for the same band in each other's personal space, they are going to interact. And... Um, just need to give each antenna its space, okay? Now, if they're totally different bands, that doesn't matter. But I would uh, recommend keeping antennas apart, if you would. So there you have it. 
Now, I want to introduce a new feature of this channel. Um, as you may know by now, um, we're doing some giveaways. My study is filled with books and gadgets that I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my first, no, oh, the second, I'm announcing my second giveaway to hams in the USA. I say USA because shipping abroad is quite expensive. The items to be, the item to be given away this time is an antenna. And it is the um, Infad Half Wave 80 uh, to uh, 8010, okay? 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 uh, meters. Now on 80, it's got pretty high Q, so it only covers the first 100 kilohertz or so of the band. But that's fine because that's where you find FT8 on 80 meters. Okay, and FT8 is the most popular mode in AM radio. Um, it has, uh, everybody presumes, a 49 to 1 ball, and it's sealed in there pretty well. Um, you can attach a counterpoise here if you need to. Uh, attach your coax. That's a little vent uh, to keep the heat out, so this thing needs to be mounted vertically and uh, then you string the other part out. There's a little tiny coil in there that I understand helps a little bit with 10 meters. Uh, frequency coverage, 80 through 10. Wire length, 130 feet. And you can put it up as an inverted V, which is what I did, and I was amazed at how well it worked. You say, well, why am I getting rid of it? Well, <laughs> I've got a couple more antennas to give away too, okay? Now, um, here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, QSL card, or simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98 to, to me, K-E-0-O-G, at P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case, number two. Your name and call sign and shipping address. Uh, please include your phone number in case I have any questions, okay? Please nothing else, though if you want to send a picture of you and your station, I may be able to show these during the live stream. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place on the live stream held on Thursday evening U.S. time on September 30th. On September 30th. I may have said in a previous video that number two would be on Thanksgiving Day. That will actually be number three. Okay, um, now this is very important. After the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. Okay, I'm not selling mailing lists, I'm not building a mailing list or anything like that. Your privacy is, all that stuff goes in the trash. Okay, so there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. There's a link there to Patreon too. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like and don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.